Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Friday here, uh, and it's looking like it's gonna be a beautiful day, which is great. Um, hey, so I'm just gonna jump right into uh, a little devotional this morning, because I think that's what we need. We need God's word. Um, we need to pray together, so let's just pray together. Would you join me? Um, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this morning, Lord. I thank you for all of those who call upon your name, uh, Lord, that we can have uh, a confidence, Lord, that you walk with us, that you hear us. Um, and Lord, I just ask you that now. Lord, I ask you to, as we're going to stop after, after this video, Lord, each, each person watching it, and just pause and just wait, wait upon you, Lord. I pray that you would just meet us all here. Lord, that you'd, you'd uh, calm us, Lord, and renew uh, strength to your people. Um, Lord, we just ask you that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, well, I'm just going to read to you a little bit of Psalm 4. And as we just go along, I'm just going to share a few little thoughts I've been having uh, this morning. Um, this, is, this is just a crazy time. It, you know, like there's there's times in my life where I've been like, you know, like they do in the movies, like, oh, this must be a dream. Like this can't be real. But the last couple of weeks, it's felt like that so much. But I, I think this is really happening, guys. I think I think this is really going on. It, it's 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 crazy to think about. Um, but we are just in, in an unprecedented time, unprecedented time of global pandemic. Um, that's that's the reality. Um, which is not a first for the world, right? Uh, Christians have gone through this for centuries, um, and Christians have uh, walked out of it. The church has walked out of things like this stronger um, in the past, and so, so my hope is that our church and, and the church in, in America and the church in the world um, can just grow through this difficult time. Um, that you personally uh, can grow through this difficult time. That you could have. Um, just great hope in the midst of it and just a strengthening of your relationship with Jesus throughout it. So that's my hope and prayer for you and for myself. Um, so we're just going to be reading in Psalm 4 for a second, okay? So uh, the pericope, the little title uh, of the psalm, in, in my translation at least, is safety of the faithful. Safety of the faithful. Those who trust in Jesus are safe. All right, so here we go. Psalm 4. Hear me when I call, O God of my, dis of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. What an awesome way to start um, just a meditation on the Lord. Just the psalmist does what I think we need to learn to do. That is to remind ourselves um, of who God is. He is, as he says, the God of my righteousness, the one who has sustained us, the one who calls us and shows us what it is to trust, to walk with him, to love other people. He's the God of all righteousness, God of righteousness, the one on whom our righteousness, our security, our faith is founded. And he says, you have relieved me in my distress. You've relieved me in my distress, right? So the psalmist is looking back to what God has done in the past. You have in the past relieved me when I've been distressed, right? And then is anticipating God's continued action in the future. And says, it says have mercy on me and hear my prayer. So what does the psalmist do? In, in a time of distress, the, the, the uh, psalmist, in this case, it's, um, is this David? Yeah, a psalm of David. David looks back at what God's done, always been faithful in the midst of distress, and remembers what he's going to continue to do, and, and he asks, hear my prayer, hear my prayer, Lord. Um, yeah, I think we're all learning to pray. I think it's great that we've been doing the prayer course. If you haven't been out on that on Thursday nights, we were at it again last night number six. Um, go to prayercourse.org if you want to watch the videos. You can, you can do it from home, although I think it's so much better to do it in groups um, and to discuss it and unpack it together. Uh, but truly, we are in a time where uh, we need our prayers heard. And part of having our prayers heard is that we need to pray. <laughs> we need to actually go ahead and, and, and come to the Lord. Um, I was praying the other day and um, like... 
you know, you, sometimes you just have moments where you just, just realize, oh man, I, I've not been doing this right, and, and, and I can see now something that I didn't see before when it comes to prayer. And, um, you know, personally, uh, I'm just a guy who likes to help. I like to solve problems, other people's problems, not my own problems, right? I don't oftentimes bring my own problems, my own distresses before the Lord. And uh, I'm just having this moment um, and I kind of had, had realized this uh, over the last couple weeks. And so I was just sitting before the Lord and I just gave myself permission. I gave myself permission at that once to just tell the Lord, hey, Lord, this is really how I feel. I'm not going to tell you how I think I should feel, which is the way I normally pray. I, I pray like this. I pray, Lord, I'm upset, but I know I shouldn't be upset. You ever pray like that? Don't pray like that. Can I just say, you know, I mean, just from experience, like it's good. To, I mean, look, it's good to temper our own attitudes, but at the same time, we have to come to the Lord in honesty. We have to come to the Lord and be real about the way we're feeling. Yeah, we don't, shouldn't self-justify before the Lord, but I think we do have to come with all of who we are. And if you right now in this time, if you're angry, if you are disappointed, if you are uh, frustrated with, with the government, uh, with your family, with your circumstances, if you're nervous about finances, you just come to the Lord with all of that. Come to the Lord with all of that and say, Lord, hear my prayer. Would you just hear me? Because this is what's on my heart. Come to the Lord with your heart. Guys, that is a discipline that needs to be learned. It does not come naturally to most of us. Um, if that does not come naturally to you, I would just encourage you right now, go to the Lord, say, Lord, hear my prayer. Remember his faithfulness. Gonna keep All right, let's, uh, let's keep going here. How long, O you, sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly, the Lord will hear when I call to him. So David is just looking at the world, a world that's just messed up and where people have just totally forgotten who God is, totally been bent against him, right? But he, uh, he, he, he says some things that are true there. In verse three, he says, know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. Him who is godly. So what does it mean for, for you and I to be, to be godly? Well, I mean, for us, that's that we are in Christ Jesus. We've, we've trusted the Lord. He's forgiven our sins. And now we walk in fellowship with him. Now we have walk in newness of life. You and I have a new way of living, a way of communing with the Lord that we did not have because before we were children of wrath, but now because of the sacrifice that Jesus has made on our behalf, because we've put our faith in him to, to, to deliver on his promises, now we are children of God. We are godly. We have a relationship with God that we didn't have before. Something is totally fundamentally changed in us. Now, I just want you to remember that. Remember that like all those weeks ago when life was normal, like you had this relationship with God. I don't know how long you've been walking with Jesus, but at some point you crossed that line, I imagine, where, where you said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to give up the ways of the world, the ways of myself, the ways of my own self-justification, and I'm going to let you be righteousness in me. I'm going to let your sacrifice be the thing, the thing that uh, just grounds me and sustains me. I need you to remember that right now. Because guys, if his promises were true that he was going to hold you, sustain you, make you his child, if they were true back then, then they remain true now. You have every reason to have that same joy that you had then, that joy of salvation. You have that reason to have that now. And if you, if you as a, as a person, you've never done that, you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, you can do that. You can trust God in the midst of a crazy time when everyone else is freaking out. You can trust the Lord. He can be your safety. He can be your comfort. And you can say, along with David, that the Lord has set apart for himself him who's godly. He's going to set you apart. You can trust in him. It doesn't mean bad things won't happen in your life. It doesn't mean your life's going to be hard, but it means this, that the Lord will hear when you call to him, just like it says there at the end of verse three. The Lord's going to hear you. He's your father. He listens. He cares for you. What a promise that is. Okay, let's keep going. Verse four. Oh, and I love this one. Four, four and five. Be angry and do not sin. Well, we've heard that one before. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart, on your bed, and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Boy, I don't know, man. I've 
been on Facebook and Twitter and just just looking around and I think we need to hear that one be angry but do not sin so what's the difference there like well, I mean, we can talk about how uh, well there's righteous indignation and then there's just just total anger um, man I I don't know but he, here's what I here's what I my thing these are my these are my two cents right look at people do things that are wrong and that should be a cause for us to be angry. When there's not justice, when there's not uh, righteousness in the world, yeah, we should be upset about that. But don't sin. You know what? The truth is that um, we're here in this moment um, and God saw it coming. But a lot of times, man, we can just we can just be mad at the world. We can be mad at God because we, because we think that the Lord has done something that he should not have done. I think that's probably sin. So I, I think we really have to stop and say, man, with all of our reacting, and we live in an age of reactivity, we're constantly reacting. I, I have to like, I have to, you know, whatever, respond on, on this, this social media thing. It seems to be my duty, my duty to have a reaction to everything around me. In the midst of all of that, I think we have to just, just check our reactivity and just say, you know, Lord, if you've brought me to this day, how can I be angry in it? Like, how can I rail against it? Like, if you've brought me here in the midst of, of this difficult time, like, 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 how can I sin by being so resentful and bitter in the midst of it? Guys, we, we cannot do that. We cannot do that as Christians. We need to be light. We need to practice peace in the midst of this time. We need to be angry, sure. When there's, when there's unrighteousness, be angry, but do not continue on in all the despondency and all the anger and all the bitterness of this age guys let's not do that that is sin we don't need to be doing that but instead and i just love this I'm, let's just read this real slow instead be angry don't sin and do this meditate within your heart on your bed and be still what's the first thing you do when you wake up you just pick up your phone and start reading the news. Can I just tell you, don't do that. It's hard, I mean, it's hard, it's hard, but I think we have to learn new habits. Meditate within your heart, on your bed, and be still. Don't think and just go endlessly into, into what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, and what do I need to do to prepare, but just think about the Lord, think about who he is, and be still. Be still, just rest in him. Think about his promises. Think about the things, all the reasons that you have to be confident in who God is because he's going to watch over us. It's gonna be great. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Guys, if there's one way we worship him, that's it. You put your trust in him. You put your trust in him. He trust, you trust him for the things that you have. You trust him to, to get you through this time. You trust him uh, to work out the relationships uh, around us. And so we seek him in prayer. We seek him all the time. We're called to do that. That is what you're called to do, to live this life of, of seeking, trusting, looking for the Lord. Let's keep going, finishing up in verse 6, 7, and 8. There are many who say, who will show us any good, right? There are many bitter people in the world freaking out. Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. You alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Guys, these verses right here at the end, I think, are so true. I just have to ask a question, and I think it's, I, I'm not, not trying to be, be negative, but I really do want to be sober about what's coming in the next two weeks. You know what? We're right here next to New York City. It's the epicenter of this, this thing, and I think that unless the Lord does something miraculous, and I think we should pray for that, but unless he does, these two weeks are going to be much worse than the two weeks before it. These two weeks are going to be really hard. What are you going to do when they get hard? I think you need to stop and think about that right now. What is your attitude going to be like when things get more difficult than they are now? What is your attitude like when, when the enforcements on social distancing get more strict? 
What's your attitude going to be like when everyone around you is really nervous and anxious? What are you going to be like in the midst of that? What are you going to be like when things get hard? When everyone around you is just saying, who will show us any good? When everyone around you is, is cursing the Lord that way, what are you going to be like? Will you pray along with David here, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us? Because guys, in the midst of this difficult time, that is what we need. We need to see the face of the Lord. Nothing else is gonna, is gonna save or help in this time. We as believers have to know that, that it's his deliverance and his peace and his righteousness that's the only way forward for us in the midst of this. You gotta set your heart upon that. You have to be a minister of that love and that grace and that mercy that only Jesus Christ can give. And we need to say along in verse seven here, you have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased, right? So back in all those awesome times when we had an amazing economy and we were allowed to, you know, go outside and, and go to church and gather together, you, say, you, have to, you have to be able to say, you have to, have to seek the Lord in such a way and know him and have, have peace in your heart where you can say, you have put gladness in my heart more than in those times. Guys, you have so much time to be with the Lord right now. Wake up early and seek him. I need to do that. I'm sleeping in too late. I need to wake up earlier and seek him. I need to trust in him. I need to walk in him all the more in order to be prepared for these difficult times, in order to be prepared for the two weeks ahead of us. I need to be worshiping the Lord all the more, singing out to him, crying out to him, praying to him. Guys, we need to be prepared for what's coming so that we can say, you have put gladness in my heart. We're gonna lie down in peace and we're gonna sleep because he is the one who makes us to dwell in safety. I pray that for you guys right now. I pray that you dwell in safety. So let's just, let's just go to the Lord and, and pray. Lord, I thank you for uh, those who are here, Lord. And I, and I just pray, I pray God that you would truly make us to dwell in safety, Lord. Lord, that you'd give us peace, Lord, peace in the depths of our soul because we've turned our eyes to you and seen your face, Lord. Lord, let us be people who are leading others to see you and your goodness in the midst of this time. Lord, give us your peace and your rest, Lord. We seek you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I would just encourage you now, stop this video. If you've made it all, all this way, stop this video and just take five minutes, take 10 minutes, just sit before the Lord meditate in your heart ask him for that peace he'll deliver it he'll give it to you um you just gotta seek him guys it's gonna be great we're gonna we, it's gonna be difficult times but we're going to be amazed at what the lord does if we seek him all right see you guys later